If I might have a moment of your time. Grand Enchanter Fiona? Leader of the Mage Rebellion. Is it not dangerous for you to be here? I heard of this gathering, and I wanted to see the fabled Herald of Andraste with my own eyes. If it's help with the breach you seek, perhaps you should look among your fellow mages. I'm surprised the leader of the mages wasn't at the Conclave. Yes. You were supposed to be, and yet somehow you avoided death. As did the Lord Seeker, you'll note. Both of us sent negotiators in our stead in case it was a trap. I won't pretend I'm not glad to live. I lost many dear friends that day. It disgusts me to think the Templars will get away with it. I'm hoping you won't let them. So you think the Templars are responsible? Why wouldn't she? Lucius hardly seems broken up over his losses, if he's concerned about them at all. You heard him. You think he wouldn't happily kill the Divine to turn people against us? So yes, I think he did it. More than I think you did it, at any rate. The Mages weren't willing to talk to the Inquisition before. Why now? Because now I've seen what you are. And I've seen the Chantry for what it is. Consider this an invitation to Redcliffe. Come, meet with the mages. An alliance could help us both, after all. I hope to see you there. Au revoir, my Lady Herald. Come, let us return to Haven. Inquisition's house! Andraste, how much did you expend to discover me? It must have weakened the Inquisition immeasurably. I don't know who you are. You don't fool me. I'm too important for this to be an accident. My efforts will survive in victories against you elsewhere. Just say what? What is that? <laughs> Squishy one, but you heard me, right? Just say what? Rich tits always try for more than they deserve. 
Blah, blah, blah! Obey me. Arrow in my face. So, you followed the notes well enough. Glad to see you're... And you're an elf. Well, hope you're not too elfy. I mean, it's all good, isn't it? The important thing is you glow. You're the herald thingy. Some believe I'm the herald of Andraste. But who are you, and what's this about? No idea. I don't know this idiot from manners. My people just said the Inquisition should look at him. Your people? Elves? <laughs> no. People, people. Name's Sarah. This is cover. Get round it. For the reinforcements. Don't worry. Someone tipped me their equipment shed. They've got no breaches. Cheeky, yeah? really came through with that tip. No breaches. <laughs> so, Herald of Andraste, you're a strange one. I'd like to join. All I know about you or your group is that I followed a random trail into a trap. What trap? You knocked, he cracked. It's... Look, it's like this. I sent you a note to look for hidden stuff by my friends. The friends of Red Jenny. That's me. Well, I'm one. So is a fence in Montfort, some woman in Kirkwall. There were three in Starkhaven, brothers or something. It's just a name, yeah? It lets little people, friends, be part of something while they stick it to nobles they hate. So here, in your face, I'm Sarah. The friends of Red Jenny are sort of out there. I use them to help you. Plus arrows. The Inquisition has spies already. Can you add to these professionals? Here's how it is. You important people are up here, shoving your cods around. Blah, blah, I'll crush you, I'll crush you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, crush you. <clears throat> then you've got cloaks and spy kings, like this tit. Or was he one of the little knives, all serious with his little knife? All those secrets, and what gave him up? Some houseboy who don't know shite, but knows a bad person when he sees one. So no, I'm not knifey shiv dark, all hidden. But if you don't listen down here too, you risk your breaches. Like those guards? I stole their... Look, do you need people or not? I want to get everything back to normal. Like you. So who are your friends of Red Jenny? You must know them. Oh, it's not hard to understand if you're not trying to waste your day on it. Someone little always hates someone big. And unless you don't eat, sleep, or piss, you're never far from someone little. Doesn't always work out, but a lot of people hated this guy. Someone got a laugh, someone got even, someone got paid. And someone has to have it explained to them that free help is good. Back there, you wanted to know if I glowed. Why? That's what you do, innit? You walked out of somewhere, and now you glow. Andraste's herald. True or not, it seemed like the easiest way to know it was you. True or not? Well, that's what they say on all. Look, don't get ahead yet. I want to help this... whatever it is. Inquisition. You sound like a thief who acts out petty revenge fantasies. And that might be bad. Oh, right. You want to prop that guy up so I can say my sorries? Bad things should happen to bad people. We find someone not so bad, maybe he'll end up not so dead. Good enough? You say that like it's obvious, but you didn't know him. I knew about him. That's just rumor. Look, I'd have been fine stripping his guards and nicking his stuff. Turns out he deserved worse. Or was him trying to kill you a good thing? Are you the baddie? Didn't think so. All right, Sarah. I can use you and your friends. Yes! Get in good before you're too big to like. That'll keep your breaches where they should be. Plus extra breaches because I have all these... You have merchants who buy that piss, yeah? Got to be worth something. Anyway, Haven. See you there, Herald. This will be grand.
Lady Lavellan, on behalf of the Inquisition. What a pleasure to meet you, my lady. Seeing the same faces at every event becomes so tiresome. So you must be a guest of Madame de Fer. Or are you here for Duc Bastien? Are you here on business? I have heard the most curious tales of you. I cannot imagine half of them are true. What have you heard about me? Some say that when the veil opened, Andraste herself delivered you from the fate. I'm not familiar with that name. I was invited here by first enchanter Vivienne. Madame de Fer is a fond nickname the court has given Lady Vivienne. I've heard she finds it amusing. I've heard very little about Duke Bastien. He hasn't been seen much at court lately. His business with the Council of Heralds often takes him from home for long periods. It can't be good for a man of his years. And of course, there's the civil war. Bastien probably wishes to distance himself from the actions of his one-time son-in-law. Tearing up the Dales in a foolish bid for power? It will end in disgrace for Gaspar. Everyone knows it. Some of those storytellers may have gotten carried away. But only for the best effect. The Inquisition is a ripe subject for wild tales. The Inquisition. What a lot of pig shit. Washed up sisters and crazed seekers. No one can take them seriously. Everyone knows it's just an excuse for a bunch of political outcasts to grab power. I've never made any claims to holiness. What's your point? In front of all these people, you admit to being a pretentious usurper. We know what your Inquisition truly is. If you were a woman of honor, you'd step outside and answer the charges. My dear Marquis, how unkind of you to use such language in my house to my guests. You know such rudeness is intolerable. Uh, Madame Vivienne, I humbly beg your pardon. You should. Whatever am I going to do with you, my dear? My lady, you're the wounded party in this unfortunate affair. What would you have me do with this foolish, foolish man? The Marquis doesn't interest me. Do whatever you like with him. Poor Marquis. Issuing challenges and hurling insults like some Ferelden <coughs> dog. <-lord. coughs> and all dressed up in your Aunt Solange's doublet. Didn't she give you that to wear to the Grand Tourney? To think all the brave chevaliers who will be competing left for Markham this morning. And you're still here. Were you hoping to sate your damaged pride by defeating the Herald of Andraste in a public duel? Or did you think her blade could put an end to the misery of your failure? Run along, my dear. Do give my regards to your aunt. I'm delighted you could attend this little gathering. I've so wanted to meet you. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Vivienne, first enchanter of Montsimard, an enchantress to the Imperial Court. Is that Marquis going to pose a problem? His aunt is the Vicomtesse of Mont de Glace. Not a powerful family, but well respected. And very devout. Alphonse will be disowned for this. It's not the first time he's brought his aunt disgrace, but I'm sure it'll be the last. And after such a public humiliation, I expect he'll run off to the Dales to join the Empress's war effort. Either to make a good end or to win back a modicum of self respect. Your salon has certainly exceeded my expectations so far. I'm glad to keep you entertained, my dear. I wanted to meet face to face. 
It is important to consider one's connections carefully. With Divine Justinia dead, the Chantry's in shambles. Only the Inquisition might restore sanity and order to our frightened people. As the leader of the last loyal mages of Thedas, I feel it only right that I lend my assistance to your cause. You say you led the last of the loyal mages. Loyal to whom? To the people of Thedas, of course. We have not forgotten the commandment, as some have, that magic exists to serve man. I support any effort to restore such order. So you're in favor of returning the mages to the circle, then? Where else can mages safely learn to master their talents? We need an institution to protect and nurture magic. Maker knows. Magic will find neither on its own. Are you devout? What's your opinion of the Chantry? I was a great admirer of the late divine Justinia V. The Chantry, at its best, unites the disparate cultures of Thedas and looks after its most vulnerable. Had she lived, Justinia could have accomplished so much. You are aware that the Chantry hasn't sanctioned this Inquisition? The Chantry is leaderless. They're in no position to officially sanction anything. Besides, my dear, if there is one virtue the Chant of Light teaches us, it is forgiveness. Once the Inquisition has sealed the breach, I'm sure the new Divine will not care in the slightest about official permission. Is your interest in the Inquisition, Madame de Fer? <laughs> it's professional, of course. What's in this for you? The same thing anyone gets by fighting this chaos. The chance to meet my enemy, to decide my fate. I won't wait quietly for destruction. What exactly can you do for the Inquisition? I am well versed in the politics of the Orlesian Empire. I know every member of the Imperial Court personally. I have all the resources remaining to the Circle at my disposal. And I'm a mage of no small talent. Will that do? The Inquisition will be happy to have you, Lady Vivian. Great things are beginning, my dear. I can promise you that. Is there something you need? I'd like to know more about the Templars. If you need insight into what the Order is doing now, I'm afraid I can't offer more than you already know. Anything else, I will answer as best I can. Why did you join the Order? I could think of no better calling than to protect those in need. 
I used to beg the Templars as our local chantry to teach me. At first, they merely humored me. That must have shown promise, or at least a willingness to learn. The night captain spoke to my parents on my behalf. They agreed to send me for training. I was 13 when I left home. 13? That's still so young. I wasn't the youngest there. Some children are promised to the order at infancy. Still, I didn't take on full responsibilities until I was 18. The order sees you trained and educated first. And what about your family? Did you miss them? Of course. But there were many my age who felt the same. We learned to look out for one another. Before coming here, my keeper suggested I avoid Templars. Do they do anything besides hunt mages? Templars protect against the dangers of magic. Before the Order left the Chantry, that meant serving in a circle. They were also tasked with tracking apostates or fighting demons inevitably summoned by the weak or malicious. What do you think of mages? Are they all a threat? I've seen the suffering magic can inflict. I've treated mages with distrust because of it, at times without cause. That was unworthy of me. I will try not to do so here. Not that I want mages moving through our base completely unchecked. We need safeguards in place to protect people, including mages, from possession at the least. You've lived in the circle. What was a typical day for a Templar there? <laughs> typical? The last time I was in a circle was right before it fell apart. Nothing was typical. Before that, then? Certain rituals require a full guard. A mage's howling, for instance. I've attended a few. Most of the time, you merely maintain a presence, on patrol or in the circle, ready to respond if needed. Mages pretend to ignore that presence, but they're watching you just as closely. Do Templars and Mages never speak to each other? Some do, but Templars are supposed to maintain a certain distance from their charges. If a mage is possessed or uses blood magic, you must act quickly, without hesitation. Your judgment cannot be clouded. Of course, ignoring one another does nothing to foster understanding. What does Templar training involve? There is weapon and combat training. Even without their abilities, Templars are among the best warriors in Thedas. Initiates must also memorize portions of the Chant of Light, study history, and improve their mental focus. Did you enjoy your training? I wanted to learn everything. If I was giving my life to this, I would be the best Templar I could. You were a model student. <laughs> I wanted to be. I wasn't always successful. Watching a candle burn down while reciting the chant of transfigurations wasn't the most exciting task. And I admit, my mind sometimes wandered. Do Templars take vows? I swear to the Maker to watch all the mages. That sort of thing. There's a vigil first. You're meant to be at peace during that time, but your life is about to change. When it's over, you give yourself to a life of service. That's when you're given a filter, your first draft of Lyria and its power. As Templars, we are not to seek wealth or acknowledgement. Our lives belong to the Maker and the path we have chosen. A life of service and sacrifice. Are Templars also expected to give up physical temptations? Physical? Why... <clears throat> why would you... That's not expected. Templars can marry, although there are rules around it, and the Order must grant permission. Some may choose to give up more to prove their devotion, but it's not required. Have you? Me? I... Um... Uh, no, I've taken no such vows. Make us breath. Can we speak of something else? That's all I wanted to know. Thank you. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Yes? Is there anything I should know? The Lord Seeker's actions are a mystery, but the Templars will aid us. They cannot sit idle while the breach remains. That's all for now. I'm sure you have other matters to attend. Do you need something? 
Can you tell me more about the Seekers? The Seekers of Truth were born from the original Inquisition long ago, when it united with the Chantry. Seekers stood above the Templars, watching over them but also investigating magical events they couldn't handle. We were meant to be incorruptible, above reproach. How seldom does reality match the ideal? But what are Seekers exactly? Those who know anything of us think we are Templars. We do not use Lyrium, however. Our abilities are different, as was our original purpose. We disciplined the Templars and were accountable only to the Divine. And not even her, truthfully. So the Seekers... commanded the Templars? No. The Order didn't assume command until after the Rebellion. The Templars have always feared us. When a Seeker arrived at a circle, they knew trouble was afoot. That kind of power is troubling. You begin to think you are the only one who can solve the world's problems. If you don't see a problem, it doesn't exist. If someone insists it does, they are the blind ones. Do you think that kind of problem could ever be fixed? Possibly. Though the Seekers themselves would need to change. They were clearly not willing to, even though they abandoned everything they stood for to avoid it. In my heart, I believe they can still be salvaged, but not by their own hands. You mentioned that Seekers have different abilities than Templars. Entirely. A Templar's abilities come from Lyrium and are designed to hunt mages. Ours come from ritual and many years of dedicated training. We cannot be possessed by demons and are immune to mind control. Useful, considering our role. Seekers can gain other gifts, though that depends on the individual. What kind of gifts do you have? I can set the lyrium within a person's blood aflame. Both mages and Templars bend before my will. Some Seekers use it to interrogate, others simply to paralyze. Once there was a Seeker who could use it to kill, that particular gift is considered rare. Why did your order turn against the Chantry? We originally united with the Chantry through a treaty that stated they would keep mages under control. It was felt Most Holy had tacitly allowed the Circle of Magi to vote on its independence, thus breaking the treaty. The Seekers saw themselves as justified, and they led the Templars into a war of righteousness. You sound like you disagree. We knew what was happening at Kirkwall, where the Mage Rebellion began. We looked into reports of Knight Commander Meredith's harsh treatment of her charges years earlier. But we found so many shocking cases of magical corruption, it was decided her actions were justified. If we'd been there when it happened, if we'd looked harder at the root causes, You seem to care a great deal about it. Too much, if you ask the rest of my order. When faced with a problem, the Seekers would close ranks and crush it. We would find an answer, but only once we felt we weren't being coerced. The moment the Mages voted for independence, our response was predictable. It was difficult to watch. How does someone become a Seeker? Most Seekers begin training in their youth. I was much older, an exception due to my noble birth. We train rigorously for years. Our bodies and minds must be elastic to undergo the vigil, and most fail even then. Is the vigil some kind of initiation? It is the rite every seeker must go through in order to summon their gifts. A full year of fasting, prayer, and separation from all distractions, including other people. We empty ourselves of all emotion, focusing only on the purity of our devotion. And the moment it finally ends, it's wonderful. Faith realized. I cannot put it into words. Was it some kind of magic? I don't fully understand it, to be honest. If the vigil was not so arduous, I'd say more should attempt it. What if mages never needed to fear possession by demons? I'm told it is impossible, however. 
I suppose I'll never know the truth of it now. I've no more questions. When Thren needs it. Quartermaster Thren understands that your work can't be rushed, Master Harry. Fine, fine. Midweek. Tell Thren to be open. Another time, then. Good. Your quartermaster's keeping this place running. I'll pass on your pass.
Should serve you well. Serve you well. Something, let me know.
Greetings. Good day. Anything you can... Blessed are the righteous, the lights and the shadows.